Madam, as the sun sets on this fateful day, I stand here to speak with a very heavy heart. While I, Mr. Sharma, please show me the courtesy that I showed you and listen to me. It's okay. Up, up, kijiye as I stand here to speak, it sits very heavy on my conscience that while we sit here and debate these larger issues, there is a 74-year-old man who sits quietly battling between life and death. Madam, the issues are not whether this Lokpal bill, this Jan Lokpal bill, or the other Lokpal bills are perfect pieces of legislation. Because obviously, no one piece of legislation can be entirely perfect. There is something that Madam, I 
entered this house in my 29th year. I have never seen <clears throat> or encountered any of the great movements of this century. I was not a part of the freedom <coughs> movement, obviously. I have not witnessed Swami Vivekanandji or Jay Prakash Narayanji or Panditji or Vinoba Bhaveji. But when I saw the initiative that Sri <coughs> Anna Hazari ji had taken, it sparked something within me. There are hundreds of millions of young people in this country, madam, that may not be agitating on the streets today, but in their own quiet and dignified way, this movement has changed all of us for the better. All of us, in some way, shape, or form, were passive observers. Many people even considered themselves fence sitters. It was very fashionable to say that there's something wrong with the system, there's something wrong, there's something broken. But this movement has convinced almost the entire youth of this country that they are active agents of change, that they can rise up and be counted, that their voices will not get beaten down, that when they stand, it will make a difference. This entire day today is a testimony to that fact. Madam, listening to the debate, over the last two, three weeks, it occurs to me that a manufactured divide is being brought about between this great institution of parliament and the people that we represent. Madam, this sets about a very dangerous precedent for the future of all of us. When you study history, as Sri Sharma said before me. You will realize that under colonial times, it was the state that was sovereign. But as our nation achieved freedom, it was the people that became sovereign. It is very clear to me that we must stand here and speak as servants of the people as mirrors of the people that we represent, the BJP and many other parties in the parliament today, I think have shown a tremendous respect for the people of this nation <clears throat> by taking the stand that is today in the hearts and minds of Indians a stand that is displayed on the streets outside Parliament as we leave today. Madam, a churning has taken place. We could say it was a silent revolution, except it's not so silent anymore. And it has compelled us, it has in a way forced our hand to react. Today the nation looks to us for a solution, not semantics, for answers. What have we seen in the last two weeks of debate, specifically from the Treasury benches, but in some shape or form from perhaps all of us? We've been talking about protecting the privileges of Parliament. That's fine. But what about protecting the privileges of the people? Madam, the people's rights in our democracy cannot be extinguished after casting a vote once every five years. It is the people that must govern and rule. 
maybe not through referendums, the kind that we see in Europe or Africa or in several parts of the world where if the public has something very important to say, a referendum is conducted. There are no points of recall in our democracy. But at the end of the day, madam, it is our duty to reflect public opinion, not to judge it and reject it. Remember, it is to the people that we go to reaffirm our strength in 2014. <clears throat> Madam, the debate is one on corruption. Many people, especially the leader of opposition, had given masterful speeches debating the technicalities of this proposal. So I choose not to do that. It would merely be repetition. There are other people who have to speak. I just want to say that when we talk about corruption, we have to be very careful not to look at it in abstraction. Madam, I come from Uttar Pradesh. Large parts of Bihar and Uttar Pradesh today have been ravaged by flood. And all those people whose lives have forever been darkened will receive checks of a thousand rupees each at best. Why? Because there is no money. There is a consolidated fund of India. There is a certain amount of money which the government has it as at its disposal. When we look at a scam like 2G, when we look at a scam like the Commonwealth Games, or the various scams since 1947 to today, What do we see, madam? We see a figure, we see a number, we see a statistic. But what do we not see? Imagine if there's a scam of a thousand crores that takes place. That is a thousand villages that will go without electrification. That is a thousand schools or intercolleges that will not get built. That is lakhs and lakhs of teachers. I mean, in Uttar Pradesh, for instance, madam, we don't have proper teachers today. We have what we call shiksha mitras, who are what? 16 and 17 year old children who pass the eighth standard teaching other people. You can speak after I've spoken. Please, please. please. I, I am speaking from a point of my experience, you may speak from a point of your experience. You cannot drown down my voice. I have earned the right to speak, you will listen to me. Madam, in our country, do you agree or not that the system of education in most parts of rural India is lacking? Is that the moot point? <coughs> or are we just here to make cheap shots at one another? The fact remains, madam, please, that in our country, please, the fact please, remains please, that I do not yield please, to you. The fact the remains way. that in our country today, the education system, the health system, systems of infrastructure are lacking. And the reason that they are lacking is because there is no money. Yesterday, during question hour, you had people who said that the Rajiv Gandhi Gram Vidyutikaran Yojana, which may have been created with the best of intentions, today lies incomplete at best. <coughs> Why is that? Because there is no money. Because, not because there is no, there's no means to implementation, it's because there is no medium for implementation. Madam, we're talking about corruption here. What systems have we had in our country to, to curb corruption? We've had systems of self-policing. Whether it is in the judiciary since 93, whether it is in the departmental vigilance, or in the CVC, the CBI, the entire scheme and system has been one of self-policing. Madam, it is clear from the voices out on the street that the system is broken. It has failed us. And so what are we going to do about this?
What is Anna Hazari asking for? That is such a calamitous situation. In essence, madam, he's asking for an independent ombudsman. Why should we assume as a polity, as the leaders of elected India, why should we assume that the first thing this independent ombudsman will do is try and gobble us up? Is that not presupposing guilt? I, I don't think that that's what's going to happen. It may be a naive thought. Madam, why are young people on the streets today? The numbers can be debated, but why are there young people on the street today? Because, madam, corruption affects our self-esteem as a nation. If a young person has to stand in line for a job and to pay a bribe <clears throat> of 50,000 or lakh of rupees to get a government job, it affects your self-esteem as an Indian. That's why young people are on the street today. If you're a, a person who's a rickshaw puller or a street vendor or a farmer who goes to the mandi to sell his produce, if you have to pay 20 or 30 percent bribes, madam, not only does it depress incomes of Indians, but it also makes them go hungry. Madam, there has been a lot of propaganda about the BJP being the force behind Sri Anna Hazareji's movement. One second. The fact remains, madam, that the movement has been an entirely spontaneous one that has erupted from almost all of our individual constituencies. All of us know this. All of us are getting calls from our constituents saying, why don't you speak on this? Why don't you speak for Hazare? Madam, the BJP is proud of its association in supporting this movement. We stand behind Sri Anna Hazare. We stand with Sri Anna Hazare. And in the event of an assault on his liberties, we stand in front of him to protect him. Madam, as I conclude my speech today, I will say that the most meaningful experience I had was when I went to the Ram Leela Maidan to sit with the people in support of this democratic movement. There was an old man who sat next to me, he must have been in his mid to late 80s, and he said to me, he said, Beta, Anna, Hazare jo hai, ek vyakti nahi hai, ek soch hai. Aur hamare desh ko mahan phir se banane ke liye, is soch ki vijay ho, ya hamare desh ke liye avashak hai. Mein keval ye bol raha hu, ki hum sab log ye kalpana karte hai. Chai Congress ke ho, chai hum ho, chai vampanthi saathi ho, chai jo bhi ho, ki is आंदोलन द्वारा इस नए रास्ते द्वारा इस सोच की जीत हो हमारे देश के नवनिर्माण की जीत हो धन्यवाद थैंक यू श्री नरहरि महतो थैंक यू मैडम